Hello and welcome back to this series of uh, rigid connection calculation according to Eurocode 1993-18. In the previous videos, we went through the calculation of uh, resistance of each component and finally we calculated the moment resistance of the connection. According to Eurocode 1993-18, we need to calculate the stiffness and then categorize the a connection to be a rigid or semi-rigid connection. For this, we will continue with our calculation. As a recap uh, to what we had, uh, two stories portal frame with seven meters center to center of the columns and also three meters for the height of beams. 6668 millimeter the net uh, length of the beam and the beam is hea 200 connected to the column which is heb 300 with an end plate of 16 millimeter the width of the plate 250 and the height is 320 millimeter if we go through eurocode 9318 table 61 we can see that for each component sketched in the left side we have reference to application rules that we use design resistance plus 6261 6262 and so forth and also we have the stiffness coefficient which is given in 632 and rotational capacity in 642 and 643 so for calculation of the stiffness we will go through these items simply we can go through class 632 and find out what is given so in 631 first basic model the rotational stiffness of a joint should be determined from the flexibilities of its basic components each represented by an elastic stiffness coefficient ki obtained from 632 these elastic stiffness coefficients are for general application item number two for a bolted end plate joint with more than one row of bolts in tension the stiffness coefficient ki for the related basic components should be combined now we can go through the next clause rotational stiffness 631 item number four provided that the actual force ned is less than five percent so for us uh we are talking about the beam which is not under actual force as the result we can use this given equation 627 sj e times z power by 2 divided by mu times summation of 1 over ki ki is the stiffness coefficient for basic joint component i and z is the levier arm that we took it from the previous video video number 8 it was 180 millimeters so from here we only have this value for now mu is the stiffness ratio uh, that is given in the next or in item number six of the same clause the stiffness ratio mu should be determined from the following if mjed which means that the taken moment from the connection is less than two thirds of mjrd which in our example we calculated it was 90 kilonewton meter then it can be taken one otherwise it should be determined according to the given equation 628b and in this equation we have the value of psi which is taken from table 68 and as far as we are talking about bolted end plate then psi value will be 2.7 as far as we do not have mjed right now for this video i will take mu as one then in the next video we will go through the calculation of mu more specifically in table 610 joints with bolted end plate connections and base plate connections if we are talking about single sided connection beam to column joint with bolted end plate connections and we have in the second column number of bolt rows in tension in this example we have two so then item number two is applied and the stiffness coefficients ki to be taken into account are k1 k2 and k equivalent so we need to calculate k1 k2 and k equivalent i will explain what these are so for k equivalent if we go to 633 6331 general method item number four in the case of a beam to column joint with an end plate connection k equivalent should be based upon and replace the stiffness coefficients ki for 
column webbing tension, column flanging bending, and plating bending, bolts in tension. So we have four items for K equivalent, K3, 4, 5, and 10. 3, 4, 5, and 10. So if we calculate these K values, including K1 and K2, then we have all the stiffness factors or coefficients. Now to understand what uh, these factors are, we can go through table 611. A stiffness coefficients for basic joint components. The first one is column web panel in shear. K1 is calculated according to the given equation if it is unstiffened. If it is a stiffened, then K1 will be infinity. Z is the levier arm from figure 615 and beta is the transformation parameter from 537. So we had this value which was 1 and Z was 180 millimeter. AVC for the column is 4743 square millimeter. As a result, I can calculate K1 which is 0.38. I can put this to the left. So beta is 1, 180 millimeter, 47, 43 a square millimeter. And here I can calculate K1, 0 0.38, 47, 43 a square millimeter divided by 1 times 180 millimeter, which will be 10. K2 column web in compression for a stiffened uh, columns, it's infinity. If it is not a stiffened, then K2 can be calculated according to this equation. DC is the net uh, depth of the web for column, which is 208 millimeter. We calculated earlier. TWC is the web uh, thickness of the column. Here it is 11 millimeter. And B effective C is the effective width from 6262 that we already calculated. For this, I provided the table as a summary. So K1. Uh, Column web in shear, we went through it in video number seven. Column web in transverse compression, uh, K2, video number five, B effective CWC, and it's 272 millimeter. It was not for bolts, it was for compression. So 272 millimeter according to our calculation. Now we can calculate K2, 0.7 times 272 millimeter times 11 millimeter divided by 208 which is 10 almost 10 the unit is millimeter column web in tension tw of the column 11 millimeter d of the column 208 millimeter b effective twc is the effective width of the column web in tension from 6263 for a joint with a single bolt row in tension b effective twc should be taken as equal to the smallest of the effective lens L effective individually or as a part of a group of bolt rows given for this bolt row in table 64 and 65. It depends on if it is on a stiffened, we use 64, or it is a stiffened that you need to use table 65. So for this column web in transverse tension, we went through this in video number two. It gives us K3 as far as we have two bolt rows we calculated for each row separately and it was 238 millimeter for each case 238 millimeter for bolt row number one and bolt row number two so here we will have two k values k31 representing k3 as column web intention one represents the row bolt number one 0 0.7 b effective 238 millimeter 11 millimeter divided by 208 it will be 8.8 .8 and k32 the same value now we have k1 k2 k3 for each bolt row coming back to here we have k1 k2 and for k equivalent we need k3 for each bolt row k4 k5 and k10 in the continuation of table 611 we will go through column flange in bending for a single bolt row in tension so this is for only one bolt row 0.9 l effective tfc power by 3 divided by m power by 3 so this is for column flange in bending and we covered this in video number one for bolt row number one and bolt row number two it was 238 millimeter and m was 37.9 millimeter so 37.9 millimeter flange thickness for the column 19 millimeter and l effective is 2 
38 millimeter for both row number one and row number two so k for one k for two both are 0 0.9 38 millimeter 19 millimeter power by three divided by 37.9 millimeter power by three almost 27 so k1 k2 k3 k4 now k5 uh, end plate in bending we went through this in video number three k5 and l effective was 125 and 368 for bolt row number one and two here we can see that l effective is the smallest effective length of the uh, equivalent t stop and m is generally as defined in figure 611 but for a bolt row located in the extended part of an extended end plate m is taken as mx so here we have mx from our calculation 33.6 and 58.6 for the other case k5 number one will be 0 0.9 125 millimeter plate uh, end plate thickness 16 millimeter power by 3 divided by mx which was 33.6 12.15 and k52 it will be 0 0.9 the length will be different it was 368 and m was 58.6 millimeter 6.75 and k10 again this value is for a single bolt row in tension for a single bolt row k10 is given according to this equation as is the stress area which is 245 for m20 and lb is the bolt elongation length that is taken as equal to grip length total thickness of the material plus washer and then half of the head half of the knot so here i can assume that the plate thickness is 16 we have the web flange which is 19 so it in total it is 35 millimeter and i can reserve 10 millimeter for the uh, half of the head here it might be a little bit more or less but 10 millimeter would be a good guess for now lb will be 10 plus 35 millimeter 45 millimeter or even 50 millimeter uh it would affect the uh, stiffness i think 45 millimeter would be enough so then k10 for row number one and k10 for row number two will be the same 1.6 245 square millimeter divided by 45 millimeter 8.7 millimeter so when we have all the values as k we can calculate k equivalent again coming back to our table 610 for this single sided connection we need to calculate k1 k2 k equivalent k1 and 2 we calculated already and k equivalent needs to be calculated according to k3 4 5 10 for each bolt row that we already calculated and plate joints with two or more bolt rows uh, in tension 633 general method k equivalent can be calculated according to the given equation k equivalent k effective r times hr divided by z equivalent hr is the distance between bolt row r and the center of compression we had this also in the video number eight of this playlist uh, here we go we have this uh, center of compression the center of bottom flange and the distance from the first bolt row was 225 millimeter and from the second bolt row was 135 millimeter we already have these two values so h1 and h2 k effective r is the effective stiffness coefficient for bolt row r taking into account the stiffness coefficient ki for the basic components listed in those clauses that we went through as appropriate z equivalent is the equivalent levier arm that needs to be taken from 6331 item number three so item number two and item number three are given here the same clause equation 630 k effective r is determined according to this equation one divided by one summation of one divided by k i r so if we come back to that table we need to consider k3 k4 k5 and k10 as a result this equation for each row will be one divided by one divided by k3 r plus one k 
4R, 1K, 5R, 1K, 10R. So here we have row 1, row 2. So there will be 2K effectives. And also after calculation of K effective for each row bolt, we can calculate the equivalent with this equation 631. I think it's better if we continue with MATCAD as it is much more convenient. Let's write down the values that we already have. K1 equals to 10 millimeter. K2 equals to, and then we have two K3s, K3 1 and K3 2. For K4, uh, we have also two values for that, the same value. K5 will be 12.15. I didn't write the units here. 12.15 and K52 6.75 and K10 is the same for each bolt row 8.7. We have K values and now we can calculate the effective coefficient from the given equation. K effective 1 will be 1 divided by we have four values. 1 divided by k31, 41, 51, and 101. So we have k effective 1 and k effective 2. Now we can calculate the equivalent. We need to define h1 and h2. You know that uh, h1 needs to be the furthest bolt row towards the center of compression. So it is 225 millimeter. Then h2 is 135 millimeter. And now z equivalent equals to k effective 1 times h1 plus k effective 2 times h2 h1 power by 2 and divided by this equation so now we have z equivalent coming back to here as far as we have k effective for row 1 row 2 and z equivalent we can calculate k equivalent as well k effective 1 times h1 plus k effective 2 times h2 divided by z equivalent now we have k equivalent k1 and k2 coming back to our equation and first going through table 610 we have k1 k2 and k equivalent if we come back to here we can see that now for our case this equation will be e z square divided by mu times 1 divided by k1 1 divided by k2 1 divided by k equivalent as given in table 610. E z square divided by mu times 1 divided by k1 plus 1 divided by k2 plus 1 divided by k equivalent. We need to define E 210 gigapascal. Z is 180 millimeter. For this uh, video, I assume mu is 1. 1.710 power by 4 kilonewton meter is S j or rotational stiffness of this connection i put this in our notes that you can have a look if you are going to calculate you can follow the steps easier so here is the method of calculation this rotational stiffness that's all in the next video we will go through the categorization of the connection we will check if this connection is rigid or it is semi-rigid we have three categories for or classification for the uh, connections rigid hinged or semi-rigid most likely this is not hinged we know that uh, but between rigid and semi-rigid we need to check according to the code come back to you very soon thank you for watching see you next time bye